Hey peeps, D here. Welcome to my studio. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to my life in clay. Yeah, here it is. All right, so what are we doing today? Well, I call them discs. I call them wafers. I call them tons of fun. And that's what we're doing. This is a necklace made of a series of these strung together on bunicord and held in place captive by o-rings all right so this class almost didn't make it to you because at one point i was like i hate it i hate it it just doesn't look good and you know what i went ahead and i made it and i still wasn't convinced because there's some design considerations right and and i was unsure I had made the right decisions, but I did it anyway. And at the end of the day, I put it together and I slid it over my head and I looked in the mirror and I said, I like it. <laughs> so that's why you're getting it. Now you have choices. I want you all always to bear in mind what your choices are. Now, I decided to use a simple striped slab, and that is in the class. I'm going to teach you how to make just simple striped slab, basic, basic, basic stuff. Now, if you have just a rudimentary understanding of canes, and you've probably tried to make a few, you probably have a little tiny canes hanging around. I have lots. <laughs> and so I took this project as an opportunity to use them. Look, see? ditto. So yours would look different if you were to make this necklace and do what I did. Your color choices might be different. Certainly your little canes are going to be different. Okay. Using those little canes on the surface, totally optional. Totally. You can just make this with only the stripes. And at a certain time in class, I was wishing that I hadn't added these, right? Yeah. Well, at the end, we discuss a little bit more about that. Now, I'm also going to show you how to make a clasp. I don't even know where it is now. How to finish it off and join the ends of your hollow cord. Yeah, I'm going to show you that. It's pretty nifty. and All you need to do is make a piece that's long enough to slide over your head. All right, so having said that, mm -mm -mm, we'll also make a little bit of goldiness there to space out all the color. And that's it. Uh huh. I call this striped disc wafer necklace <laughs> because I have no imagination and that is precisely what it is. So let's get started. So what you see before you is actually a necklace made using, I <laughs> got a little clay on there, using um, mud cloth canes to make wafers, these thick disc wafers. And um, that is what we're going to do. We're not going to use the mud cloth canes, but you know, if you understand just the basic strategy to make these, um, you're not going to have a problem. You're just going to need to make the canes that you want to use. All right. Now, rather than mud cloth canes, this is kind of a heavy necklace too. So I think I'm going to try to make them a bit smaller in diameter than this. It doesn't look terribly huge, but when you have this many, together, the piece can get quite heavy. All right, what we're going to do rather than use mud cloth canes is we're going to make some striped slabs. Now this is my box of striped slabs from the class I did in the members classroom that was these really wonderful striped bangles and then I did some earrings. I'll show you what those were. So here are the bangles. And just based on, here are some bangles, you can see, like that. And here's a chain, oops, 
love to bangle. And then here's a chain also made with these simple striped slabs. Okay, let me pick up my bracelet while I'm flying. So that's what we're gonna make. Now, I think the important thing, something that will make your life easy, er, <laughs> is if you do the same thing every single time. Don't deviate from the pattern. And uh, if you do that, then you'll have an easier time with the thickness of the wafer. You see, you're going to take a slice of your cane, wrap it around, and that cane, the wafer, has to be the same thickness as the cane. So these are too thick. They're just too thick, unless I want a wafer that's this big, right? Instead of this big. So the wafers are going to be more along the lines of this guy in terms of size, you see, like so. Now, in terms of color, I like, I'm going to make one of these and it's going to be just all kinds of different colors. It doesn't have to be that way. You could choose your favorite color and just make them all the same if you want it. But I think it's a little more interesting to pick and to make them in different colors. So this is my kind of my green box. And this is the way I store my leftover clay when I'm mixing, if I have leftover green. Look, that's a lot of green there. Okay, you know, here are the oranges, the yellows and the reds. And I kind of ran out of blue because I made that French lavender cane and the background was blue. But, so here are the blues. And what I'm going to do is just select a color. Let's just say that's one color. Let's say the next color can be, oh, oh that's actually a Skinner blend. Let's say my next color is going to be this guy. I'm going to make a bunch of them, by the way. I'll probably make a yellow. So I'll just keep picking and grabbing these colors. And the colors that I'm picking out are actually what I would call my base colors. By that, I mean, this is the color I start with. I add white to it. And then I have two colors to make a slab. This is not quite enough clay, I think so. But I think you get the picture, right? You're just going to... And because you're making pastels, you probably want to choose colors that do have a little bit of a boost to them. Like this is a good one. This might be a little weak. I may throw some red or orange in here. Da, 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 da. Let's throw that guy in. Yeah, let's turn it a little more berry. A little more of a berry color. Now this is red and I think ultra blue, so perhaps that's not exactly the right color. I don't necessarily want to make it pearly. So anyway, I will mix up, let's just do this one. I'll mix up this color and, um, and then we will continue. Actually, these two look like they, they'd be just fine. Okay, so I'll be back. So after scooting through my box, I gathered up the bits that you saw me get. I gathered up this guy. And because I want it to be more berry than orange or, or red, I'm going to mix this magenta in as well. So all of this gets mixed together. I'm not going to be making humongous canes. See, because I like that color. That is a great lipstick color. Okay, so let me continue and I will be back when all of these different bits and pieces are one. Okay, so it's not quite berry enough for me, so I'm gonna hit it with just a bit more magenta. <laughs> Now, 
if you're afraid of color, a lot of people are, a lot of adults are. Don't know what happens when we grow up, but we get scared of color. Am I gonna make the wrong decision? Anyway, so if you are, then believe me, tone on tone or picking a color, adding white to it is just built in harmony. Um, you won't sit there going, why did I put that color next to that color? I don't get it. It looks awful. So tone on tone's really safe. I don't think you'll ever say that as long as you start with a color you like. Okay, let me continue I'm making this. I'm going to berry-fy this color. More berry, more berries. All right, so I'm gonna stop here um, because I'll make another one that is definitely more magenta. Okay, so here's my white clay. I think what I'll do is I'm going to divide this into quarters, quarters. And I'm gonna take this And I'm going to mix it in with probably this much white, like X marks the spot. Okay. So. Oh, no, I want to keep that just like that. This is my mixy color. So let me, let me roll this out. Because, of course, we want the same volume, don't we? You can trust me on that. We want the same volume. Uh-oh. Danger, danger. I didn't flatten it enough. And that's why it looks like this. Oops. Oopsie. Okay. Let me roll it through the thickest setting of the pasta machine. Let me do it again. Let me reset the machine and roll it and make it thinner. I have some crumbling underneath my rollers, but you know, not a lot because the clay is not really, really hard either. Okay. Da, 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 da. I just wanted to stick together because I'm gonna mix the two colors together. So, hello, I'm gonna be conditioning anyway. Now, this is always kind of an approximation. So let me just take this much of this, mix it with this. Let's see what we have. I'll be back. So these are my two colors. Have they both been rolled through the same setting? Yeah, they have. I have a little bit more of this color than this color because I didn't add quite the same volume of white, but it's close. I'm not unhappy. Okay. Oh, I'm back. I sneezed. I managed to cut the camera before I sneezed right into my phone microphone. Everybody got lucky. All right, so here we go. Let's make our slab. Now I've set, um, my machine is set to setting one right now. Now my machine is an atlas that starts at zero but I think I'm gonna do one instead, make them just a little bit thinner. Okay, now I'm just going to cut, make kind of a neat-ish rectangle. Okay, if you don't like the color, if it's too dark, you're gonna add some of this. Uh, if it's too light, you're gonna add white, right? All right. I'm separating these right this very moment. All right, so that's, there are the stripes. Now let's roll it again through the same setting, which is setting number one. Ta-ta. Now at this point, I'm just going to stack it. All right, and you need, having a ruler is a good idea. I have a jillion of them. Can I find one? No. Oh wait, I found them. I found, I found it. 
Now I have to wipe it off. Okay, I found, <laughs> I think I found the ruler with the most clay on it. I have a bunch of these. I love them, so they're just all over the place. Okay, there we go. All right, so I'm just going to cut it in half. So that's at about three inches. Like so. I'm going to cut it in half. And then stack one on top of the other. Like that. <laughs> I think this would make a wafer that's a bit too thin, but some of you might like this thickness instead of one that's slightly thicker. Okay. Now I'm going to make mine slightly thicker. It's going to be twice this thickness. Okay. So let's cut it in half again. Only I'm going to go this way this time. That's an inch and a half. <laughs> and stack them. Stack them. So I will make them all the same. Roll through setting one. Roll the two colors through one. Put them together, roll it through one again, and then stack until you have two, four, six, eight layers. Okay, every single one's gonna be like that. All right, so let me prepare the clay for the core scrap clay inside. I'll be back. So this is my scrap clay color. The thing is, you have to remember that you're, there's always a potential you're going to see this and this, right? Now, this particular necklace, I packed them pretty tight, so you don't see much of this, but I have another one that I actually weigh, wear more, and I spaced the discs out so that you definitely see what color the um, these sides are. So I think that it's probably a good idea to decide what color you want that to be. Now, this is scrap clay, but I was fine with it because it's brown, it's earthy, and so uh, I was fine with it. I think maybe they're not even the same color, but they're all more or less this kind of earthy color. Now, for something like this, I'm not sure you want that earthy color. I'm just not, I'm not really sure that that's what you really want to show. So what I would say is it's not a bad idea to make up your mind. Now, initially, maybe you decide that all of it's gonna look black. If you see this, it's just gonna be black, that's all. If you, you know, you could plan more. <laughs> you certainly could. You could add more to your workload. And let's say you take this and you want to have a nice color here instead of black or instead of gray, then maybe you pick um, the complementary to red. Maybe you make this kind of a green color, maybe the, I don't think that institutional green necessarily, but maybe like a, a muted kind of lime green. But if you just decide on what your system is, in other words, red, the complementary is green. The violet, the complementary is yellow. Blue, the complementary is orange. So if, if you make that decision and you decide and you stick with it, then when it comes time to put all the pieces together, 
all you have to do is concern yourself with the pattern and the, the color on the outside here. You won't box yourself into a corner where you put two things together and the same colors are facing each other or I think you understand what I mean. Just have some kind of system in mind. Now the easiest system is what I'm going to do right now and that is I'm just going to use black. Okay. Now our arcane is four thicknesses of clay rolled through setting number one. Now the two in the middle can be plain old scrap clay, just like this, or like that, okay? But the two on the other side, the outside, we want one side to be black, right? Okay, no problem. I'm gonna take my black clay, I'm rolling it through a thinner setting, let's say, because I'm not gonna be sanding these. That's not really necessary, so I can make this black clay quite thin. Oops, <laughs> it'd be nice if it didn't have all kinds of other colors mixed in. Okay, so let's just, I'm just trying to cover it like so, da, 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 like that. Only now it's setting number one plus setting number six, isn't it? Therefore, I will reset my machine back to setting number one. Roll this through. Okay. Excellent. Okay, so let's put the middle together. Just like this. There we go. So far, so good. Now, let us put the other two sheets on. Here's one sheet, oopsie. It looks like I'm gonna make a grand total of one bead. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. The important thing is you know how we got to that one bead, right? Okay, now, theoretically, these should be the same. Ta-ta! All right. I know I said I was going to use a smaller cutter. Oh, yeah, here, I have a smaller one. Here we go. We'll just use this guy. Let's make it nice and little. Okay, I just want to roll to flatten, all right, all right, like that. I've got a horse right here, his name is Paul Revere. Okay, now I'm going to take my cutter. This is the smallest one in my set. And I am just going to cut. Actually, er, I don't want it to get stuck. Glad I remembered. I use this repel gel on the inside of my cutter. Now I'll smear some on the outside too. Let's start this again. <laughs> And I just kind of wiggle it down through the clay. And when I get down there, I rotate it. Now, are you stuck? Seriously, are you? You know, I had a clay pusher that I made myself. 
Let me see if I can find my clay pusher. I'll be back. Found it. All right, see this? It's just scrap clay. And I just filled filled the cutter more or less and I then kind of pushed it out and um and baked it. But what I do with it now, you know, I think I'm going to put a little cornstarch on this time so that this end doesn't stick to the black clay. Ooh. <laughs> it's alive. Okay. So clay pusher comes in really handy. Very handy. And there we go. Now it's time to wrap it. Once again, you want to wrap. You want to set up some kind of system for yourself and if possible, not waste a lot of this. See, if I cut it this way and thin it a little bit, it's going to wrap around. But I think I'd rather try to cut the short side. So let's start by setting three. I just need to get the lay of the land. So that's three millimeters, like so. And let's see how thin I have to go to make this piece long enough to go around there. All right, I'm going to start with one. Ta -ta, ta -ta. Not long enough. Two, two. Look, black clay on the end. Three. Oh, pretty much, uh, pretty much there. Three. And you know what? As I wrapped it around, I did note that the strip is a wee bit wider than the disc, which makes sense because when I pushed it down, I also compressed it as I was getting it out. So let's just say that I stretch it, roll it down through three, stretch it just a tad until it is the same width as the disc. And that's pretty darn close. It's not exact, but I don't think it ever will be. Okay. And somebody out there might be thinking, well, why don't you, why don't you just roll it through setting four? Well, because basically I could thin it out, but it would still be wider than I want. And the purpose here is to make this strip the same width as that core. Okay, so that's excellent. That's good, and it's long enough. Let's make a nice clean cut, and let's do a little wrappage. Now, there's repel gel here, but it's not really an issue. Okay, I've never had a problem with that tiny, tiny film of repel gel. This stuff is good, but it's no, it's not that good. <laughs> and then you will wrap. And then bring the ends together. Okay, got a little bit of a gap there. Got a bit of a gap there. That will happen. Well, it happens to me. Okay, so let me just try to stroke. Like so. So that's what I will do. Now, I shouldn't forget if I just make all of them at the same time, should I? No, of course, I shouldn't forget. But let's say a month goes by and I come back and I go, oh, wow, I really want to finish that. Uh, what did I do? I don't know exactly what I did after a month. 
But to tell you the truth, I mean, next week would be tough. So I'm gonna take and I'm gonna write exactly what I did. And I'm going to put it up on my bulletin board so that I know what to do. So I don't have to sit here and do everything if I don't want in case, just because I'm afraid I'm gonna forget. Okay, so I will do that. Okay, so let me get my centering template because we gotta find the middle of this thing. I'll be back. Found it. Okay, now I'm just gonna take and center and place the template over it like so. Then take a, a needle tool and pierce where the center is. Lift and poke a hole. And try to poke straight down. Hmm. Come on. Now, if you find these a bit plain for your taste, could be absolutely positively. And this isn't the most decorated piece, is it? No, it isn't. Well, you want to do something else. Maybe it's time for us to search through our trusty boxes of teeny tiny canes. Teeny tiny canes. And um, let's see about adding some decorative elements. Do they have to be teeny, teeny, teeny? This is a, kind of a... Is it too similar? Could be. You know, uh, here's the thing. We like certain colors, don't we? We just tend to gravitate towards certain things. And I gravitate toward warm colors and this, I mean, I'll, what color is that? <laughs> I think I just made it again. So let me try see if I can deviate from my norm. Maybe pick up something like this. Yeah, could also just do black and white. Black and white's always a good thing. I have plenty of black and white canes. I wanna use this little blue blade. This thing is way sharper. And I'm cutting them thin and desperately trying to cut them the same thickness. <laughs> Am I succeeding? Eh, sort of. There is the seam. This is a great place for a cane slice. Just like that. Hmm. You know, I have fuzz all over everything, but you know why I have fuzz? Because I hug my animals. I love them so much. I'd have to wear a hefty bag. Okay, so I bet you saw what I did there, right? I located this one, and then to the best of my ability, I positioned this one directly opposite. Now, let's take one of these guys and try to position this guy between these two, that one and that one. I am frequently off because I find it just about impossible to get them perfect. Yeah, 
I don't know what to say. And of course you want that little cane slice to be centered on the band as well. Position is centered between the two, but the piece itself is also centered on the band. Oopsie. That looks good, but I think I need four more. <laughs> So as I cut too, I'm slightly rolling the cane along in an effort to keep it round. So you know, here I failed. Not exactly centered. Oh, oh. <laughs> Phew. I saved it. I saved it. Okay. It just needed to be centered on the band. And I can see my spacing is wrong, is not exact. Some are closer together than others, but the good news is that nobody sees the whole band, all sides of the bead at once. So if you are within reason, nobody's going to say, I think this one is a little too close to this one. Okay. So I'm gonna live with that. That's kind of sweet. That's a sweetie bead. And when you make so many of them, you're gonna make a lot of them and put them together. Um, you don't really see any one single piece. You just have an impression of a lot of color and pattern. I'm not sure I like this on there. I'm going to think about it. It is not too late to take it off. It just isn't too late. Would I have been happier? This is what happens in the studio all the time. Maybe this one would be better. Maybe... Okay, well, I'm not going to bore you guys with my little problem here, but I have decided I'm taking it off. I'm not that fond of it. And as long as you don't, like, really push it on there, you should be able to lift it off. Now, if you work with a very soft and sticky clay, maybe that's, that, maybe that's a lot more difficult. Could be. Could be. Those are nice, though. I'll figure out something to do with them. All right, so that is our basic strategy. So let me make a few more and then we'll talk about stringing. So I'm making another one and I'm gonna make it a little bit differently because I'm gonna use this, which is of course too wide to do this way. Okay, but you know, as I was working, you know, things come back to me. So I put the repel gel on, but as I'm pushing through, I'm rotating. And you know what? That helps. It really helps. It helps keep that clay in the cutter a little bit looser because as you're cutting through, of course, the clay below is holding, holding it. Doink, doink, doink. Hey, not too bad. So do the twisty thing. It'll help you. It will help you a lot. Okay. All right. Excellent. Good deal. Okay. So let's take this. And I rolled this through setting number three, didn't I? So I am going to roll this through setting three now. I did mark. See, those are three millimeter marks. So that's what I cut along. Three millimeter slice, roll through setting number three. Now, I did stretch it out a bit to thin it when I made the other one. So you know what? I'm going to do the same thing. Why not? Why not? Just 
Okay, so, okay, buddy, how, hmm, what is your measurement? You appear to be about 10 millimeters wide, like so. So let's take this strip and lay it on the 10 millimeter side of my Marxit tool that got ripped off in China, but hey, not happy about it, but I can't do anything about it personally. Okay, so I transferred the marks. And now I am going to cut them. Okay, and I'm trying to cut so that I have a perpendicular cut, perpendicular to these stripes, okay? Right along that 10 millimeter mark. Who knows, maybe I'll use these. I think these will look better on this. Let's start with four, okay? Well, apparently you are a, just a tiny bit thicker than 10 millimeters, just a bit. So in a situation like this, I think that what I will do is just try to thin this a little bit. I don't believe that's going to make much difference. Okay. Also, you know what? It, this did not get squished down in the cutter. Remember when I used this? Well, when I pushed it, I actually made it thinner. Okay, that looks good. All right, so let's see. And that is indeed better. I think that was just the little bit I needed. Like so. If I do that again, I guess I should get, now see, look at this one. Mm. Maybe it's, maybe it's operator error. <laughs> you know what? It's always operator error for me. Around this joint, it's always operator error. That one's a bit thicker. So yeah, operator error. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just trying to heal the joints just by rolling. And I'm rolling lightly because I don't really want to affect the wafer. And I have a bit of trimming to do, don't I? I do. I definitely do. So very carefully, I'm going to try to eliminate 
some of this excess stripe. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying. <sighs> well, it's not perfect. Could I make it perfect? Mm, I'm going to try. I'm going to do my best. Maybe it would be easier to stand it up and slice a bit away. Is that a bit easier? Okay, so you guys, whatever, however you can do it, do it. All right, I'm gonna find the center and then I'm going to decide, am I gonna use those on here? Something tells me I'm gonna like them better. Okay, I th think that's close-ish. close-ish. Let me just push it straight down. Okay. So I have two beads, two, oh, two beads. So let me just check this out, cause I really, oops. Seam. Yeah, it looks better. I like it better on the violet. It adds a little something. There we go. Okay. So I will try to find something to put on here. I think it kind of looks, I think it would look better if there was just a little something. It doesn't have to be eight, maybe six, maybe something else. Anyway, I'm gonna look for something and I will be back. So I went cruising through the box and I found this. I love this, lime green with an orange center. It's a circle and a square. And I put it on here and I'm much happier. I really like it. Okay, so now I have two. Like so. This would be really cute. I mean, I need yellow. I need green. I need some blue. I need, you know, there are a lot of other things I want to add to it because I want this to be like a, a carnival. <laughs> I want this to be like a party. Okay. So let me cure these. I'm going to make maybe two more. Yeah, I'll make two more and then we have enough to even, you know, just start stringing. I'll be back. So I made a one with greens and the violet and then this guy too. 
I showed you how to make that cane. Now, this is something, this is one of the canes from the other class. Sometimes you can just pull them apart like this guy. So here's my cane. Let's see if I can pull anybody else apart rather than making all new ones. Maybe if I go slowly enough. Okay, so you guys in the classroom, you might have a whole bunch of canes just waiting for you, right? It is possible. Now, this guy feels a little more resistant, but I think I can do it. Okay, so now I have three more canes and I didn't even make them. I didn't make them. Well, I made them, but I made them some time ago. Yay! Yay me! Yay me! So far, so good. So far, so good. Yeah, one of the advantages of working with a clay that's a little bit drier than others. All right, I have all my canes. <laughs> Pretty much all my canes. I may have to make, you know, I may have to do a pickup cane, but uh, for now, I think, I think I'm good to go. Huh? A little bit deeper. This is the same one. This is a little different green. And here's an orange and red. All right, let's do, uh, hmm, what shall I do next? Orange and red, orange and red. Now see, this is also a different scale, isn't it? See, the stripes are wider. So, you know, you don't have to make them all skinny if you don't want. Okay, I'll be back when I get my fourth bead done. Then these will go in the oven. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I cut a slice off the red orange and it is a little bit too wide. It's wider than my wafer. So, Look, it's quite a bit wider. So you know what? I am just at this point going to cut a bit off the side like so. Let's see if I can see if I can get it closer and I, I have to do about the same amount on the other side like this. Okay. And that will make it just a wee bit easier for me. Let's cut the end. And now wrap. All right, so I will put a cane slice at the join too. Okay, so let us find the center again. Then I have to go hunting for the perfect canes to go around the perimeter. This is gonna be a fun little thing. I think this is gonna be a fun necklace. Why not? And it's, it only needs the very simplest kind of cane to make. And some of you guys in the classroom, you already have them. Yeah, you do. I'm betting you do. Sitting there waiting for you to make a striped wafer necklace. 
Okay, now I'm searching for games. Searching, I'm on a, oh, I'm on a hunt for canes. Canes, canes, canes. I've always loved this cane. I love it. This is the one I'm gonna use. I'll be back. So here are the four that are ready to go in the oven. Now this only has six applied canes. This has six, this has eight and eight. Okay. These are going in the oven and when they're done, I'll be back. So I took another look at these and they're looking a little, you know, yeah, I'm gonna sand them. P180 Abranet wrapped around a sanding block. It's not gonna take much, but I think it will look much better. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so sand both sides, one side, the other, and I'm not even sanding it so that it's absolutely positively perfect. I just want it to be more perfect than it is. Yeah, just a bit, just a bit. It's worth it, I believe. Then I'm going to sand like this and kind of even out the thickness of all the slices. Kind of soften them too. Soften the edges a bit. Okay. And as I said, it doesn't take much, you know. Boom, done. Boom. Ooh, like the leaning tower of discs, <laughs> of stripy discs. Let me move that out of the way. I will finish these, then I'll be back. All right, I sanded everything. Now this is the order. This is the order. And I want to make sure I get the order back again, because you know what? It's not that it's so much trouble, it's just that I did it. And so I would much rather honestly not have to do it all over again because now I have to wash them. Okay. So I'm going to cut, I'm going to take a picture. I'm going to wash these just toothbrush and water. Not even any, I don't think I'll need any soap at all. I'll be back. All right. So I'm going to make these little gold spacer beads, <sighs> spacer discs. And what I've got here, you can see these are just two thicknesses through setting one. Okay. Black on both sides. I'm going to put holes in them. And then to make my life a little bit easier, I am actually going to cure these first. You know, these are a little floppy because they're thin. I could try to do it now and bake it all at once. But I think this time I'm just going to find the centers, put the holes in, put them in the oven, and then I'll add the gold and cure them again. All right, let's make our gold sheet. Three coats is usually what I give it. And they're kind of light coats. I mean, this is a rather large area I'm covering. Okay, and I just push it around. And then I will let it dry to the touch. Doesn't have to be dried all the way down because as a matter of fact, if this, uh, if the paint dries all the way down, <laughs> if it's completely dry, then it doesn't stick to the clay anymore. Oops. So there's a window of opportunity. You have to use it before that happens. So try to make just what you need at the time. Now this is more, but I'm gonna show you something else. So, all right, so it won't take long. That's not very much paint on there. 
So I'll be back when it's time to do the second coat, which will just be in a couple minutes. Okay, we're ready for two. And it really literally was five minutes, so it doesn't take long at all. Thing is, if the paint is wet and you go to put more on, what will happen is the wet paint pulls <laughs> pulls the sort of almost dry paint right off the clay. It does, yeah. It does. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, this is a little bit heavier. Might take just a little bit longer to dry, but it's pretty fast. Okay, so I'm going to wait for um, a few minutes and then I'll put the third coat on. I don't think you need to see that. You've seen two coats, so I'll be back when this is when it has a third coat on, three coats, and it's dry. So we are actually almost ready. These are cured. I've been drilling holes, okay, because I used my pokey tool, <laughs> and it is not two millimeters. So this is actually uh, a drill bit, and I put it in clay, cured it. And this is two-part epoxy around here, so it doesn't turn. Okay. Two-part epoxy clay. I love that stuff. Love it. Okay, so. Have to do that with all of them. Unless you happen to make the hole big enough. With your pokey tool. Okay. Now, oh, I'm going to take this opportunity to sand the edges of all of these discs. Now, I didn't really feel I had to do that when I was working with the clay, and it was all raw. But here, yeah, I might as well do it. Okay doesn't need a heck of a lot, just, just a bit. And the sides look fine to me. Okay, so I'm not going to make you watch me do all six of them. What do you think? That's not very good. No, no, no. Two is enough. All right. So let us go back to our clay with the gold. And it's nice and dry, but not dry all the way through. Now, how big are you? Ah, you're kind of, you're sort of five millimeters. You're definitely not seven, and you're definitely not three, so let's give five a go. Take the five, and push it in, like so. Now, this clay is pretty much stuck to my tile, so I really, really should get it off at this point. Yeah. No, when I was putting the gold paint on, being stuck to the tile really helped because if it hadn't been stuck to the tile, every time I went like this and lifted my finger, the clay would have come with me. Yeah. So there was a good reason for sticking it to the tile. But now there's a good reason for getting it off the tile. What do you think? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Okay. 
Okay, so let's cut a couple of strips. I am going to start with the first one using my rigid blade cut straight across like so. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to try to cut it so that it is five millimeters straight across like that. Let's pick it up. And that I'm going to leave right there for now. Okay. Because if I move it, I have to cut another straight edge. I don't want to do that. Much better for me to leave it like that. This is liquid clay. You could also use poly paste if you want. Okay, just like so. Pick her up. Now I did roll this gold clay through that same setting that I had rolled basically all of the stripes, right? Setting number three. I believe I did thin this down to four, however, because I did end up thinning the stripe clay to make it fit. Hmm. Well, that's good. This is five millimeters. Not three, not seven, but five. So that's good. I think this will be great as just a spacer periodically in our necklace. All right, so let me continue. I will do the rest of them. I'll have a total of six. Pop them in the oven, and when they're done, I'll be back. Well, I'm going to do it again, just in case I did it like here before. Okay, you guys know me. Sometimes, you know, I think I just get caught in my own not-so-deep thoughts. Actually, sometimes I can't see. I can't see what I'm doing, so I it kind of goes like this. And then before you know it, I'm like, and then you do this. <laughs> And that doesn't work out too well for you. I have to be more conscious of that. Less selfish. So I'm going to do this again in case I didn't show you. So I put the liquid clay on. Stuck. And then the easiest way is to take your fingers and put on both sides like that. And kind of adjust it. Sort of put it down and adjust it so that right there where you want it. Okay. Roll it forward, roll it back, you transfer the mark, then you close it up. Just like that. And what do you think? Not too bad. It's quite easy when the disc is cured. It really is, but it requires an additional curing. So you have to weigh these things. Just know that it's an option for you. All right, so that's three down. Let me get these three done. Pop them in the oven. When they're done, that's when I will be back. All right, so remember what I said about paint on clay? I'm sure you do. You have to use it uh, before the paint actually dries or it's no good, all right? Now, so what I do when I have this much, I have no plans for anything to do with this at the moment. So whenever this happens to me, I make these. These are little, and these are cured little pieces that I can then later use 
on various pieces. I embed them in beads and, you know, wherever, wherever. Okay. So simple enough to do. You want to take your clay and really press it to a tile like so. We really want that clay to stick. And now let me make a donut. I use this guy. Really push it down, push it in. And because there's no plunger, you know, I really want it to stick because I don't want it to stick in here. All right, so let me make another one. Like so. And I would go down the row. Now I want to punch the hole, which is that. See, that comes out of this, or it came out of that, like so. So let me punch the hole in the middle. This one's actually, I think, a little bit large, is it? No, I guess it's the same size. Okay. Now I will just keep punching little shapes out like this. They will stick to the tile. I'll bake all of it. And then after it's cured, it comes out and then I break it apart and throw away all the parts, all the excess clay. I'm not going to really try to remove it right now. I wait until after it's cured. Okay, so every available little space may get a little punch. Never know when you're going to need these things. So even something like that. Otherwise, it's just garbage. <laughs> okay. And it's worth it to me. I store it with my crystals, you see. Here they are. A bunch of them along with my crystals. And I've been using them quite a bit, so... Pretty happy to have them. Okay. And so forth. So I'll just continue making my little donuts and my little circles and whatever else I can think of. Hmm. Maybe this guy. No, this is the one I was using. Yeah, I really like the donuts, so I make a lot of them. <laughs> All right, I'll be back. So here you can see what I've done. Using the little circle cutters and then just using a blade. Little tiny squares, strips, you know, triangles more and after this is cured then I'll break all the pieces apart and then I'll be able to embed them in raw clay or affix them to the top using a little bit of liquid clay something like that but I find these very helpful Ta -ta. didn't waste a thing so here are these guys they're cured and they're ready to be broken apart yeah mm -hmm. they are Perfect thing to do when you're just like listening to t TV or you have a couple minutes and you know. <laughs> Busy work. But you know, these are really useful. You just put liquid clay underneath them when you use them, that's all. 
Okay, so I gotta admit, I haven't really used these little rectangle ones. The ones that I use mostly are these guys. Yeah, these guys. It's just a matter of punching them out. Sometimes they're more stubborn than others, but hey. Suffering for my art. Mm. La da 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 Let me see, what am I gonna use to punch these out this time? And some of you might be saying, well, that's not worth it. I hate wasting stuff like the gold sheets I make. Yeah, it's going to take a few minutes to straighten it out. But you know what? Once I do, I've got these great parts that can be used for other things. That's what makes me happy. Maybe I'll leave that in there. Maybe not. You know, I think I can make this easier. Something in my little brain says maybe I can make it easier. Maybe not. Okay, I got that one out. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I'm gonna try anyway. Uh -huh. hmm, maybe this one's, oh no, here we go. Da, 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 da. Like so. And I definitely will use these in something. I absolutely positively will. Okay, so I am weird because I actually like doing this. Yeah, how strange is that? I do. I do, I do, I do. Now you, mister. Yeah, just bend it. Not gonna break. Just bend and pull it apart. Put it down and look all the little round things I have. Is that all I've got? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's take these and pop these out. Da, 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 da. Maybe I could have pushed them out a little harder. I don't know. It's always about this difficult to get everything out. Da, 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 da. Making my own components, yes, and not wasting gold clay. All right, so I don't think you want to watch me. I just, I'm just going to sit here and do this for about oh, however long it takes. These might be interesting. I'm liking these a lot. Let's see a little triangle pieces. I think these are going to find their way into something. Okay, I'll be back. Here is the garbage. Now, if this is a little more interesting, I might actually keep it, maybe impress it in to quite do something with it, but it's not that interesting. Maybe I'll try to make one that is <laughs> just using cutters, things like that. All right. Now I have to figure out what to do with them. Uh -huh. All right, so 
let's talk a little bit about this piece, right? Because what you do with these may be impacted by what I tell you about this one. Now, it's a lot of pattern here. You recognize the uh, mud cloth canes and the mud cloth canes on the channel really do lend themselves to this kind of application because they they tend to be the shape of borders, right? They are rectangular and thin like that. So they're actually perfect for borders and and using them in this way to make these wafer type beads. So that's what you see before you. Now, because the canes are different sizes, I had to adjust this, you know, our, our, our sheet. I had to adjust it so that it kind of fit the borders. And, you know, it, sometimes I reduce the border a little bit, you know, so you're gonna go back and forth. But the goal is always to have the wafer or the disc underneath the border, uh, you want them to be the same. All right. So another thing I did was I added certain elements that are the same, like these gold, these gold pieces. That's Louie. Louie, what have you got? Louis, I think Louie has a peanut butter chocker. <laughs> He's such a funny dog. Anyway, so I find that these are also very helpful. It kind of breaks up all the pattern, I think. Visually, it breaks it up a bit. I also added these. You can see these very thin zipper cane ones. It's kind of the same thing. You know, the gold, the zipper canes, when you have pieces that can sort of visually be identified as the same, it starts defining the space, at least it does for me. Sort of organizes all the pieces so that, you know, somebody who's looking at it, they might not be able to identify exactly what the order or the design is, but um, I think it kind of sets your mind at ease when you see elements like this. It They do define, they add some kind of definition to the whole piece. So I think I will probably make some of those and integrate them into my design. All right, now another thing, stringing. I like to string on Bunicord. This is hollow cord, two millimeters. I also have uh, solid, solid core uh, cord, <laughs> and it stretches less, but all these rubber cords stretch. They just stretch. The weight of these beads has made this whole thing stretch. See, when I put it together, it was tighter, but this is a very old piece. So I'll probably have to restring it at some point but I have learned that with this kind of weight, this many pieces and this weight, I really have to do something to prevent that from happening. It's pretty simple to do. All you need is tiger tail, okay? Tiger tail and hollow cord. You put the tiger tail in the cord and at the end, the tiger tail sticks out, but you bend it down like that and then you glue the whole thing into your clasp. And what happens is the tiger tail does not stretch. And so the cord can't stretch either. All right. Okie dokie. So let me secure that, set that aside. Now, when I string this up, I don't have all my beads yet, so I can't string it really. So I will just show you basically what I do. Okay. I'm going to leave space in between. I'm not, they're not going to be as tight as this. I'm gonna leave space in between. Now I'm not gonna cover a clasp in this little tutorial 
So if you want to do this, probably the easiest way to do your first one is simply to make it long enough so that you can put it over your head. And at the end, you designate one bead as your final bead and you will glue in and then you glue into the other side. And um, if you use this glue, your Loctite glue, this is really good stuff. You're also going to do this, which also helps. I put a two millimeter O-ring on. Now let's put another O-ring on. And this is the way you do it. You take your forceps, you put the ring on the end, you push it down a bit, open the forceps, then do one of those numbers, okay? All right, so here we go. So each of the beads will be captured with the O-rings. I glue them as well. When it's a piece like this where you've got space in between and all I have is cord, I'm not gonna have more beads or anything in between them that will keep them separated. So I've got to use this, these O-rings. So I put glue and then I glue the O-ring to the bead, and then I repeat on the other side like that, and it holds the whole thing in, in place. And this is the way you will finish, right? You'll have an O-ring on one side, O-ring on the other. You put the two ends together, you glue them, you glue the O-rings to the outside of the bead, and you let it cure. And that's a very secure closure. <laughs> All right, so let's do this again. All right. Pull it down. And, you know, you just measure however, whatever the distance you want one bead to the other. Okay. and so forth. You have a nice cheerful little necklace. It is cheerful. It's a very happy thing. Okay, so. Oh, uh, let's see, is there anything else? Now I'm gonna use, when I do it, my iridescent rich gold. I will dab this on a thin sheet of black probably three coats. You guys have seen me do this before. Let it dry until it's like surface dry. Then establish what thickness your disc is going to be. Cut the strip the same thickness and just wrap it around. Cure it. And then you have another component that you can use when you design your own necklace. Okay. I'll be back. I put it back together. I inserted the gold, these gold guys. Okay. And then this is going to be my clasp. I actually, this doesn't have a clasp. So what I'm going to do is take this guy, this, and I'm just going to wrap it around my head. I have to see how long. Okay. So here's, this is how long it takes. You know what, I'm gonna add a couple of inches like that much so that it's not tight going over my big head. I have a very large head. For such a short person, I have a big head and I have big feet. I do, big head, big feet. Okay, so let's do it. Now I am not going to put the, uh, this, in because this is not that many beads, not compared to that other one. Ooh, that was a lot of beads. Okay, so let us begin. Where are you? Huh. Okay, I'm looking for my forceps, you guys. They're here someplace. 
I wish you could see my studio. It is, hello, it's right here in front of my very nose. Yeah. I am going, well, you know what? Okay, you guys know how much I hate math, but I guess I should just figure out how long this is and how much room between and, you know, all that good stuff. So I have 14 in total. One, oh, no, 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 no. Because the gold, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two,
close. Scooch a little there. All right. Okay, I'm just kind of eyeballing it because I can't get my ruler in there. Eek. Okay, good. So let me do that and then we'll see what we're looking like. All right, so here we are. I have strung and spaced everything. Probably not perfectly. I did my best. But now I'm going to try, try. I'm not going to try, I'm actually going to do it. I'm going to start gluing. All right, I'm gonna glue. So what I'm gonna do is leave one of the O-rings in position like so, okay? Take my glue apply a little dab of glue right there at that o-ring the first o-ring like so then slide the bead up to it you can see i have excess glue there that's okay i really do want the bead to be glued to to the cord Okay, so let's put a little bit more there. And now I will slide this bead up so that the two O-rings have captured the bead. Okay, just like that. All right, now the second one, it looks like it's in a pretty good position. It could probably move to the right a bit. So let me just scoot it to the right. It's kind of awkward. I'm trying not to move them. I'm trying just to move particular one without disturbing the others. Okay, so this will go back. Then I will repeat Put a dab of glue right there. Push the bead up like so. Put glue there. And then do my best to slide this up without disturbing the other bead. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's a little awkward. Okay, there we go. I need to have a little slidey tool. There, so that's two. So then I will work my way all the way around in exactly the same fashion. When that's done, I'm gonna let this sit and uh, you know, it's the end of the day. So tomorrow I'll come back and we will glue it that in and the necklace will be done. All right, so here we are. Now I made a mistake in my spacing or when I was moving them. <laughs> this is not long enough. This end is not really long enough to do this and have enough space between the beads. Yeah. So what I'm going to do instead, because it's not really critical, is I'm going to designate this bead as the last bead, as my clasp bead, and join it this way, okay? Kind of join it like that. Okay, so I had glued this down. It's not a big problem because in order to loosen them up, all you have to do is loosen this O-ring 
loosen that and loosen this. You see? And now it's free. I can re-glue it later. All right. So what I've got to do now really is take this guy off, take this off, and cut the cord at what is the halfway point. I think it's about there. Where are my scissors? I always lose my, ah, oh, here are my scissors. Okay, so where would half be? Halfway is about right there. Just like that. All right, now, this is how this is going to be spaced on the other side. And now I have to cut what is halfway from the O-ring. Once again, same bead. So this is about half. So let me cut that like so. So now these two ends will be in the bead like that, okay? Just like that. Okay, so let me move this. Let me put this on. Da, da, da. Maybe I have to do a little drilling. Where's my drill? So many. That's too big. That's too small. <laughs> okay, this was a good size. Okay, just like that. Let me just see if I have any glue residue that I have to get rid of. That's okay. I'm going to put that on, and then I have my O-ring on the other side, and that's fine. Okay, so the first thing I have to do is I have to join these together, and that is when this cord comes in. Now, this is one millimeter buna cord, and it fits inside, so I'm going to push it way down there. Cut like so. And I'm going to use my glue to glue it in. Okay, pull it out a bit, apply the glue, push it in like so, like that. Now let's put some glue in here or on this the other side like that. I really want it well glued, okay? And then insert this inside. Hello. I can't see you. I know you're there. I know there's a hole. Bonk, bonk, bonk all the way. Okay. Just like that. Now I have that one millimeter cord inside glued to the sides of the cord. And then I have the ends glued as well. So let's let that sit for a moment. Okay. Because this will slide over and it will sit right there in the middle, just like that, okay? <laughs> All right, so I think we're good to glue. So now I will just put glue right there at the hole on the cord Hold the cord and just push 
the O-ring. It gets a little awkward because I don't really have anything to pull, but I think that's good, just like that. Okay. Now let's let that dry for a moment. Then I will put glue here and push this O-ring up and then we're good to go. <laughs> I can't believe I'm still working with all this glue that I thought I didn't have. Yeah, I did. So just remember, if you're using this Loctite glue, you think that there's no glue left in there, well, you're gonna be surprised. Let's push this. I'm just going to get a good grip on it and push it up like so. Okay. Good deal. So now it's secured, okay? That's a little glue on the surface. I'm not too worried about that. All right, so the piece is now put together. I can slide it over my head and I'm done. Now let's talk about the piece itself. You know, sometimes I get the idea. I get an idea in my head and there are a couple things I consider when I do classes. Number one, um, number one is it, it can't be too terribly difficult for the general channel. Um, and, and this, this class met that that one criteria because all you had to do was make, you know, a striped slab. It's easy. The second thing I like is using things you have. So all these little canes, your canes will be different, but you probably have tiny little canes that are looking for homes. So it met that criteria too. It has to be, it has to look good. It has to be something I like. Now here's where this piece kind of falls down for me because I'm not sure I really like it. I like individual parts of it. I love seeing Ditto on a bead. I love using stuff and, I, you know, yeah, so it's only half satisfying. Will I make this particular piece again? No, because I think that this piece would have looked better, generally speaking, if I had just made stripes alone so that each one of these was just a different tone on tone stripe color without the additional cane slices applied to the surface. Or if I wanted just to use the cane slices, maybe it would have been better just to decide on a color, maybe just black, and then put the cane slices on just black. I think that would have looked better too. I also think this would have looked better. If I had just decided on a color family, let's say everything was, greens and warm greens and cool greens and just like that. I think it might have been a more successful piece if I had done it that way. This is okay. It's okay, but I think it could have been better. Yeah, I do. What can I say? It could have been better. I like the gold accents. I'm not sure they do much of anything other than taking space, however, because everything's so spread out, right? Everything's spread out. So anyway, that's it. Will I make this again, this exact piece? No, I won't, mm -mm, not gonna make it again. Will I wear it? Probably, yeah. It is a very easy to wear piece. You slide it over your head. It's not too heavy. It's not a tiny look, it's a big look without a lot of weight. All right, so that's my analysis at the end. I'll be back. Okay, so the one last thing I think I'll do is put Nivea on the scritchy 
black areas. Could I have done this at a different time? Yep. And I would have if I had thought of it. So I'll just take this little toothbrush. I bought like 20 toothbrushes from Timu for like $2 or something. Just to have them in my studio for paints and for things like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I did try this on and it's really cute on. So, I'm looking at it, not really loving it when it's flat, and then I put it on, and I'm like, hey, this is cute. Context. In the context of my work surface, right here, it wasn't the cutest thing I've made. Okay, I'm not going to say it's the cutest thing I've ever made anyway. No. But I'll wear this, it's really, it's fun. Okay, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this class. I hope you learned a little something. I think the way to end and close it off might be the most valuable thing you learn. All you need is hollow cord and then a uh, cord that is small enough to fit in the hollow cord. My cord is two millimeters. My other cord, the thin cord, is one millimeter. And then you need some O-rings. All right, well, I'll finish that. You don't have to watch me finish the whole thing. Anyway, it turned out to be pretty cute on. Mm -hmm. Like it. Like it. Once again, will I make it again? No, probably not. Probably not. That's not necessary. That's not necessary. But hey, it's a fun piece. Everything we make doesn't have to be like, that is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. You know, no. No, some things are just kind of normal. Within the range of normal, I like it. Not the over the top, I absolutely positively love it more than anything else in the whole wide world. So anyway, having said that, I hope you make discs, <laughs> wafers, disc wafers. Yeah. Okay. So for today, I'm Donna Cato signing off and thanks for watching. Bye.